check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hello, and welcome to my studio. I am here today with Pepper. Today, I'm going to make a cowl neck dress. I've been wanting to make one for a really long time, so I thought I would just try it out. Just like chill. I'm making it out of a stretch velvet. We're not gonna be working with any bias or anything. I think this is gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be working off of a tank top. So I'm gonna be using this as my template with a couple of measurements. And yeah, so let's get started. Okay, I've got my tank top on. It's just a normal racerback tank. So what I wanna do is mark the bus points. And also I want to measure from my bust to waist, bust to hip as well. And then also your hip width would also be good. And then you also want to measure the full length of your dress. I'm just going to do it from the bust point to the floor. And then now with some chalk, I'm going to mark my bust point on this awkward. Oh, wait, make sure that your side seams are like straight and everything. Yeah, I have to redo this. What I'm also going to establish is how much do I want this to cowl and where do I want the cowl neck to start, like the points of the cowl neck. So I'm going to just grab my fabric. Oh, look how rich it is. So I want it kind of like that. So that's how wide my neckline's going to be. And then I wanted it from up here. I'm going to mark that too. Now we can get to making the pattern. So I wrote all of my measurements down here. I have my bust point to waist, six inches. Bust point to hip is 15. Bust to hem, 36 inches. Hip line, 38. So that's like the full circumference of the fullest part of my hips. Cowl length is 20 inches. So that's the neckline. Now I want you to take your fabric and fold it lengthwise. And I want this fold to be half of your cowl neck width plus five inches, or a quarter of your hip width plus five inches, whichever one is bigger. My cowl neck length is 20 inches. Divide that by two, that's 10 inches plus five inches. So I'm gonna do 15 inch fold. Fold your tank top that we marked in half from seam to seam. And these two markings we made, the bust point and where you want your strap to end, you want to place this tank top this amount from the top of your fabric. So I'm going to measure down and line up the fold with the fold of your fabric. Measure down from your bust point to your waist. That was six inches for me. So I'm going to mark a line out an inch from the waist of the tank top. That will add some seam allowance. Then I'm going to measure down to the hip line. That was at 15 measure out a quarter of my hip which is nine and a half plus an inch and then you can measure from your bust point to your hem mine was 36 we'll deal with the hem later at this point you are going to mark your cowl neck my cowl neck length was 20 inches I'm going to divide that by two because this is half of the front and just mark a line across right where that mark was. Okay, so this is what we have, the cowl neck, the waist and the hip, and the length. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this with the edge of our cowl neck. This is gonna be our underarm. So I'm just going to line it up like so, and angle it towards the waist. I had to adjust this part later because I didn't do it properly. So make sure you pivot your tank so that the waist marking on your tank lines up with the waist marking on your fabric. Otherwise the side seam will be too long in that area which you will soon see. I'm going to trace out the armhole. I'm just going to add a half inch to the side like we did everywhere else. I also want to mention that the stretchiness of your tank top should be similar to the stretchiness of your fabric. My fabric was definitely less stretchy, so I was really glad that I added extra width on the side seams. Just to be safe, it's better to have it a little bit big than small. So I'm going to actually connect the lines. It's going to look very strange. I'm gonna fold at the cowl neckline so that we can mirror this area on the top here. 
I'm going to move this up and we're going to do the hem area. Okay, this is my hemline. I'm going to make it straight across. I'm going to take it all the way to the edge, the 15 inches. I just kind of want it to flare out a bit. So then I'm going to continue this line. Just this is curving out, so I'm just going to go up an inch here just to make a bit of a curve to the hem. Now it's ready to cut. I'm kind of scared, but I'm kind of confident at the same time. The dress outline should look a little bit more like this. And then I'm also going to just make this area straight. Okay, it's time to do the back. Okay, I'm only going to copy it up to the waistline. I'm gonna do a little snip here so that I know that these parts line up. Just little snips like inside the seam allowance. I take my top away and I'm gonna mark how high up this is. Yeah. I'm going to reline up my shirt at the waistline. This is my waistline. I want kind of like a racer back crisscross. So the back is going to go up into a point. At this point, I want it to stop. So I'm going to do a curve to there. I'm going to leave about an inch of straight area here and then just curve it along. Now I want a facing for the back, just like we have for the front. So I'm going to copy out just this area. If you look at your dress, this is actually the underarm seam and this is where your facing is going to line up. So I'm just going to see how long that is. Three and a quarter. So I'm going to make my lining three and a quarter at the side seam under underarm. Great, that's our facing. Let's line up exactly with this. I'm going to cut out two one inch wide straps. As for the length, I just made my straps longer than I thought I would need, but I measured it later. Here are my straps. Now that I think about it, because I want the straps to go in this seam, I'm going to actually cut the facing of my front dress off. This matching like this. And this is going to be a seam. Okay, this is what we've got. That's the facing for the front piece. That's the facing for the back piece. And then these are gonna be the straps. This spool is all messed up. It's crushed up inside. I can't use it. So I'm just gonna use some glue. First thing I'm going to do is take these straps and Place them right sides together, like this, and then sew up the edge at about a quarter inch. It might be better if you do a skinny zigzag and then trim it down, but I'm hoping this will work. I'm really hoping this little thing works. I'm not really sure fully how to use it, but I'm gonna figure it out. I've had the loop turner through the tube then push some of the fabric through the little hole in the end and I tried turning this out. This may just work. Yes, it's working. Oh no, it came apart. My thread through, tying it up works way better. Success! So now I have two straps. Now we can get to sewing these into the garment. Okay, the first thing I want to do is sew the back to the front on just the entire side seam. The side seams here aren't really gonna match up very well, so I might have to shorten it or something to make it match. I'm gonna sew with a straight stitch so that I can take it out easily, and then we'll see how it fits. So it's way lower than I wanted it, all the way up there. So I'm actually gonna take off 
some here as well as here. I'm actually following the line of my tank top. This is the piece I cut. This is the new underarm, so I'm just gonna match that to this underarm. Yeah, so those are gonna match up there. I could also recut this piece and make the side seam area longer, so just keep that in mind if this happens to you. I took out my test stitches, then re-sewed the side seams with my serger. You can also use a zigzag stitch on your domestic machine. It works in a very similar way. Now I'm going to sew together the facings at the little side seam area. Now I want to establish the strap length. So I only need 10 inches. The straps are going to go here and there. With the right sides of your fabric facing, you're going to match your facing to your assembled dress neckline. I'm going to add the straps into the front first. So I'm going to take the strap and bring it around to the back. And then face the facing to it, pin that in place. And I just pin along here with the strap under it. I'm going to sew all the way around adding elastic into the underarm areas. Okay, that's the top done. Now I'm doing the front underarm to back underarm with elastic. Okay, now we're doing, this is the point where the straps are gonna be. This is the front, the cowl area. This is the back. I added the elastic all along the underarm on both sides. Definitely need to reinforce the strap areas. Okay, there it is. Ready to put on. I should have made the facing part way longer, which I did in the first place, but then I cut it because it had to line up with my adjustment. So definitely keep that in mind. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so another thing I'll mention is that the nap of the fabric or like the, the smooth direction of the fabric is going down on the front and it's going up on the back and that's why it's darker on the back and lighter on the front. I'm actually just going to leave my hem raw, so I'm going to get out my rotary blade and cutting mat and just cut it really cleanly. These need to be reinforced with a back stitch, the side seams. After finishing up the hem, I also added some heat bond to the underarm to keep the facing inside the dress. As I mentioned, I made the facing way too short, so this helped a bit. Oh, and heat bond is like a double-sided tape for fabric that is activated with heat. To keep the facing edges from rolling as knit fabric likes to do, I ironed on a strip of fusible interfacing to the bottom edges of the front and back facing, and it really helped a lot. Then since the neck of my dress was still too low for comfort, I tried making a sort of bandeau piece. I draped a piece of fabric on my dress form and traced out the front of the dress. 
Then I sewed it together and hand sewed this piece to the inside of the front of my dress. Then I realized how bad it was and I fake cried to display my very real frustration as I took out my careful hand stitches, readjusted it, and then re-hand sewed it again. But to my dismay, it was a definite fail in the way that it fit. Then I realized that all along, all I had to do was shorten the straps in the back. So I did that instead. And this is the result. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. like this video click the like button you'll make pepper happy and subscribe if you want to see more I would love to see if you make this dress tag me on Instagram at Lydia Naomi studio or hashtag Lydia Naomi comment below I love talking with you guys and I'll see you next time bye